God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Great Saint Joseph, we dedicate your life to care for you. Trust in God for all the exercise of God. With guidance and patience, you share your primary skills with Jesus. Please be with me as I learn about the tools I need to become a skilled builder of Jesus' church in the world. Amen. Lord, take my mind and think of it. Take my heart and of love. Take my lips and speak to them. Take my hand and do a long and touch and those who are love. Take my feet and help me walk towards the future. Since we don't have a Friday, we'll do intentions today, too. St. Joseph School. Birthdays to celebrate. Happy birthday to Holly Herbert in fourth grade. Happy birthday to James Donovan in sixth grade. Happy birthday to Everett Krauss in preschool. And happy birthday to Alina Hussein in second grade over the weekend. Our lunch today is mini corn dogs, dinner roll, mac and cheese, veggies, and fruit. Our school-wide election results from yesterday um, Trump Pence received 99 votes, Biden Harris received 74, and four votes for Kanye West. Our U.S. election is still undecided as of this morning. States are still continuing to submit counting votes. So maybe today, maybe later this week, stay tuned to the news to see who our new president is. Next, I would like to announce our October Students of the Month. So if this student is in your class, feel free to cheer for them after I read their name. Our Kindergarten Student of the Month for October is Alex Cerisi. <laughs> our First Grade Student of the Month for October is Matvi Sheramata. Second Grade Student of the Month for October is Carly Donovan. Third grade student of the month, Lila Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> fourth grade student of the month is Levi Frank. I like that name. Third <laughs> grade student of the month for October is Richie Donovan. Richie! grade for October student of the month is Mary Kate Matichewski. Our 7th grade I mean, student of the month for October is Gianna Longo. And our 8th grade student of the month is Ariam Gavis. Yeah. 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 All of these students and all of you yeah. are yeah. on your list every day. I'm so proud of how our students follow the Please come up to the office. If you were a student of the month, we will take individual photos after announcements. No. <laughs> Let's say a Hail Mary prayer together today. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Have a wonderful day. We have a long weekend, Thursday and Friday, no school. And give your teacher an extra thank you today. They've been working thank lots you. of hours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. all the way from St. Joseph's School. Have a great day. I pledge to be humble and put in others before myself. I pledge to be obedient by following God's commandments by being a good example to others. I pledge to be a neighbor through my willingness to help others by sharing what I have with those who have left. I 
pledge to recognize every opportunity to show my faith in my thoughts, words, and actions. I pledge to respect all life forms on the planet Earth to be a good steward of all the gifts and talents God has given me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are you? Who wants to hear the first reading? One, two, three, four, five. Who wants to hear the gospel? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A reading from the gospel according to Luke. Once, when large crowds of people were going along with Jesus, he turned and said to them, Those who come to me cannot be my disciples unless they love me more than they love father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and themselves as well. Those who do not carry their own cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. If one of you is planning to build a tower, you sit down first and figure out what it will cost to see if you have enough money to finish the job. If you don't, you will not be able to finish the tower after laying the foundation, and all who see what happened will make fun of you. You began to build but couldn't finish the job, they will say. If a king goes out with 10,000 men to fight another king who comes against him with 20,000 men, he will sit down first and decide if he is strong enough to face the other king. If he isn't, he will send messengers to meet the other king to ask for terms of peace while he is still a long way off. In the same way, concluded Jesus, none of you can be my disciples unless you give up everything you have. The Gospel of the Lord. Close the Chromebooks. What did you get from this? Oops. Oh, go ahead, just tell me what you got from this. Um, that like we need to love others as God. So there's no point in saying like I love Jesus because there's Jesus and Nathan, but if I hate Nathan, I can't truly love Jesus because and um can't also be a disciple if you're not like thinking like they said with a tower you gotta plan it out because then no one wants a half built tower you gotta be like you gotta make sure you have enough money before you waste it all on something you can actually do so yeah what is all that about towers and kings going out what's that got to do with gospel why Jesus tell those parables gotta be like smart gotta be um you have to plan ahead. You have to plan. You have to be smart with it. Like, if you, if you, like, when you put your ten thousand men to attack the twenty thousand, you're on the other side of the country. The messengers aren't going to be there. The messengers are going to get there when all ten thousand of your people are yeah, there. Yeah, what's that got to do with your faith? We got a plan. For what? God has a plan for us. Don't do it all. Remember what we said, what's the difference between humans and the rest of the animals? Humans have intelligence. We have intelligence, and we have a choice. And Jesus is saying, this choice involves what? With great power becomes great Every choice, every choice you make involves what? Consequence. Consequence. Every choice. Mm -hmm. 
And he's saying, if you're making the choice for him, don't just do it flippantly. You want to do something flippantly? Yes, you guys are some of you are experts at it. Uh, whatever, we'll just send it. <laughs> that means you don't think about choice. You just do it. He's saying, if you're choosing for me, you got to realize that what? You have to do it all the way. There's a cost. There's a cost for choosing for Jesus. What does he say the cost is? Those who do not carry their what? Cross. And come after me cannot be my son. One of the costs of choosing for Jesus is you're going to what? Lose money. You're going to suffer. That's part of choosing for Jesus. Because the world says what? That's wrong. That's weird. That's alien. The world says that's stupid to choose for Jesus. So Jesus says you need to count the cost before you make this choice. Just like a king that goes out. He thinks about before he decides to go to war. Is this a smart choice? Is it worth the what? The loss. Is it worth the cost it's going to take for me to win this war? The guy that's building the tower, he's saying, you got to what? You got to count the cost. You got to decide, do I have what? What it takes. Do I, have, do I have enough money to build this tower? Now, Satan and the world are going to tell you that the cost is what? Too much. It's too much. It's not worth it. Don't choose for him. I mean, who wants to suffer? Who wants to be made fun of? Nobody. But that's part of the cost of being a disciple. But every time there's a cost, there's also what? There's also a reward. Every choice you make has consequence, good and bad. Everyone. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us here. Don't be that person that says, yeah, I'm a Christian. But they haven't what? Done anything for Jesus. They haven't thought about it. They just say, oh, everybody says it, so I'll be one. Remember what, what's the term for that kind of Christian? Nominal. Nominal, just in name, right? Walk peacefully with me through this day. You're wondering how you will handle all the things you need to do. But there's only, really only one way to go through this day, or any day. One step at a time. I see you rehearsing how you will do this or that, as if you were ready, getting ready for a play. Don't waste time rehearsing. Turn to me instead. Ask me to guide you, and I will. One of the greatest things about walking with me is that the tougher your day is, the more of my power you can see. The harder things get, the more I will help. See your challenges as chances, chances to depend on me more than usual. When you don't know what to do, wait for me. You can be sure that I know what I'm doing. So be ready to follow my lead. As we face this day together, I will give strength to you and bless you with my peace. Who's feast day? St. Agnes. St. John. The 
school. It's about 20 minutes from my house. I went there to a conference one time. I said, boy, I should have started teaching here. It'd be a lot of, I could ride my bike. St. Mary's. St. Thomas. You could ride your bike here. It just turns in a while. You know, I dream. I have dreams about riding my bike here. See, 30, 30 miles, That's, that's a, that would take about, probably take about three hours. So you can start like three in the morning. Plus, there's not real, you can't ride your bike on the freeway, so. Yeah, you can. Be fast. It's against the law. Be fast. Go as fast as the cars. There's a cop's gonna pit maneuver you. Well, then you're not biking. <laughs> They're gonna shoot your tires. Who knows who's feast day? Pit maneuver you. St. Charles. St. Charles. Bar Anybody know about St. Charles Bar No. I know that Jamie said for her Other than they have a cool church in Northeast Minneapolis. They got Oh, with all of our responsibilities, how tempting it is to procrastinate. Tomorrow, I'll start that diet. I'll work on the mass worksheet. Oh, I just had it down. Next week, I'll write those letters or do those surveys from social studies. Next year, I'll organize my closet, clean my room. Yeah, none of us knows if we'll have a next year, or a next week, or even a tomorrow. The past is a dream. The future is a vision. All we have is today, right now. St. Charles Borromeo knew what it was like to have too much to do and not enough time to do it. Not only was he deeply involved in the Council of Trent, he was in charge of the entire correspondence of the council. Anybody know about the Council of Trent? We were talking about Martin Luther yesterday in the Protestant Reformation. About some of the abuses were going on. The church held a major council after all this was happening to try to counteract the attacks on the church at the time. And so he was in charge of it all. He was the Bishop of Milan, a diocese in a deplorable state since no bishop had lived there for more than eight years, 80 years. Despite his tremendous workload, he understood the importance of living in the present tense. Once when he was playing pool, a friend asked him what he would do if he knew he had only 15 minutes to live. Barely pausing, St. Charles answered, go right on playing pool. God exists only in the present. If we're to meet God, we too must learn to live only in the present. Only when we open ourselves fully to the moment at hand can God bless us fully. That's why we shouldn't put God in a box, right? Which we tend to do. Okay, God's in here. Oh, he's out of the box now, why? Because we opened it. Because Mr. Hale's reading spiritual things, I'm going to do religion here in a minute. We take him out of the box. Then we go to math, and what? He's back in the box. We stick him back in the box. Because this is math. And God's trying to tell us what? No, keep me there. He wants you out of the box all the time. <coughs> he, doesn't want, he doesn't want us to put him in the box. Take out your mass worksheets. I saw several of you that aren't finished, so I guess you'll have to go in the hallway. We're going to go through them, and then I'm going to collect them anyway.
near metal, near and uh, in between the end. Yeah. You're going to grade those like that, Sam? You're going to miss those? Yeah. Are the other people I said you're, you're going to go for the missing of them? Oh, you don't have intersections. Callie, here's your uh, chapter 3 test. As of right now, you can. We're, we're grading. So, what are you doing? As of right. So, are you going and missing them now, or are you going in the hallway? Okay. So, the first one is consecration. What is consecration? of the bread and wine turning into body and blood of Jesus. And when does that happen? Where in the mass? Sierra. The liturgy of the Eucharist. In the liturgy of the Eucharist when? So when do you know that's happening? Ari? In the middle. Yeah, when do you know? <laughs> this is the miracle of the mass. This is where we're supposed to really be tuned in because the miracle is happening. Mm -hmm. Sam? Um, uh, after he does his homily. Yeah. yeah, but tell me specifically what Before happens. Before communion. And he raises up the body and blood. Right? It's not the body and blood when he raises it up. When he, okay? when he raises it up, it's what? Bread. Bread. When he says the words, what? Take this, all of you, eat of it. For this is my the chalice body. of my blood. The minute he says that, that becomes what? Body of Christ. That becomes Jesus. And you can you can research Eucharistic miracles. I think maybe I've shared with you the fact that uh, the priest that was starting to doubt. There are many Catholics that don't believe that, that it becomes Jesus. And there was a priest that was beginning to think, oh, I'm not sure, this is a, maybe just a symbol, it's not really Jesus. And then that host took on flesh. Took on flesh. They actually, they have DNA tested. There's, so if you go and look under Google and you check out Eucharistic miracles, there have been several throughout history of where the host takes on actual human flesh. And the DNA on each of them is the same. And the wine became blood and coagulates like blood. And it has the same blood type on all these miracles in totally different places of the world. Where Jesus is trying to tell people, ye of little faith, what? Believe. Do they eat the flesh? We eat the flesh. Even though it's a symbol, it doesn't usually take on flesh for us, but that's, that's we're believing it in faith. But there are many that we don't, we don't realize that miracle. We go up casually. We go up. That's why I hated the new the pandemic rules. If you went to mass during the pandemic rules, what happened? You couldn't have the bread. When did they have the Eucharist? At the, at the 
very end. The reason I didn't like it is because it's like you're going through the drive through Okay, here you go. Get out of here and be safe. So you have no time for reflecting on this miracle. Penitential right. Oh, well that's why it's important because it's actually Jesus. We get to receive Jesus. Okay? Penitential right. That's at the very beginning of the Mass when we say what? I have. Lord have. Christ have. Lord have. It's very beginning. We also sometimes, if you say all the right pr prayers of the penitent right, we say, I confess to you, my brothers and sisters. Take us. You don't know that prayer? You don't have that memorized? <coughs> I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Okay. So where that happens, we said at the beginning, what it is you're saying, you're sorry. You want to prepare your heart. So that's, did we do that one together? Uh, we did the why it's important. Okay, the why it's important, again, you're, you're cleansing your heart to prepare yourself to receive the miracle of Jesus. The Gloria. And again, that's at the very beginning, after the penitential rite. After we've cleansed our heart, we're praising God for who he is. So it's a, it's a psalm or a, a prayer of praise. That's what it is, and it's at the beginning, after the penitential rite. And it's important, again, because we're telling God who he really is. We're honoring him. General intercessions. Those are right after the homily. What, what they are are the prayers of the faithful. Why they're important is because we're lifting up the needs of our community. Sign of peace happens right before communion. Comes from the ancient times where uh, people would often greet the greet their other Christians with what? In fact, they still do it in Europe. Somebody did that as one of their non-material cultures. How do you greet them? A kiss. It's like a seal of prayer. It's a seal of belief. What you believe in. So, uh, where is it in the Mass? We said that. What it is is where you offer peace to one another. It's important because you're unifying. Basically, uh, we used to have a priest here that all, he really pounded that in because most people, they don't do the handshake of peace for what it really means. Most people do the handshake of peace at church and what are they doing? They're just saying, hi, how you doing? But really, you know what you do, if you, if you wish somebody peace, what you're really saying is, if you're not at peace, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you, you are at peace. So if I'm shaking a guy's hand, and this, this guy is without a job, officially, if I'm shaking his hand, I'm saying what? I'm, I'm going to help you find a job. Okay. No, because nobody understands really what we're doing at the Mass. Even the guy without a job, he's not going to say, what? Uh, I need a job. Happen? Even though that's what true fellowship is supposed to be. That's what church is supposed to be, fellowship. But most people are afraid to be real with one another because they're too embarrassed about the things that they're struggling with. And we shouldn't be. That's why I say if your friendships go deep like that, that you can share your struggles, then that's a true friendship. And that's true fellowship because they're going to make you closer to God. Acclamation. There are several acclamations. You have the gospel acclamation where we say alleluia right before they read the gospel. 
you have the holy, holy, holy acclamation that we uh, have right before communion. You have the memorial acclamation where we say, let us proclaim our mystery of faith. If you do the first prayer, it's Christ has died. For our sins. You guys don't know that memorial acclamation? Maybe that's why it's totally silent during Mass so many times. And then when I say my responses, people always are looking at me like, um, why are you being so loud, Mr. Hale? I know, like, what would be your response? Mm-hmm. I can't do anything. The whole point of a response is what? To respond. To respond, yeah. Why they're important, again, because we're praising God. All those are prayers of praise. Nicene Creed is our profession of faith that we say right after the homily again? Before the prayers of the faithful? What, why it's important is because we're stating what we believe as Christians. Communion is where we receive the body and blood of Jesus. Right after the Eucharistic prayer or the Lamb of God, it's important because we get to receive Jesus into our hearts. Two parts of the Mass. I'm going to go over these and grade them again, so, but I appreciate if you somewhat mark some. Two parts of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Why it's important? The Liturgy of the Word is important because we get to hear God's Word. Liturgy of the Eucharist is important because that, that's what the miracle uh, happens where the bread and body, our bread is changed into the body and the wine is changed into the blood. What's a holy day of obligation? It's a day you're required to go to church. I wrote Christmas. Under penalty of what? Basically, if you don't go to church on a holy day, what? You're not a Christian. It's a sin. Doesn't say you're not a Christian, just a sin, and I need to what? What do we do when we sin? Repent. We need to repent. And say, I'm going to try next time. But every time you don't go, you need to realize it's a sin. Unless, unless you're what? Sick. Okay. And right now, the obligation has been lifted. That means right now, because of the pandemic, it's not a sin. Every Sunday is a holy day. And then there are six other holy days. So you could go by the calendar. So we start in January. When's the first holy day in January? Ascension. January 1st, which is Solemnity of Mary. Any other holy days in January? So that's the first one. Any holy days in February? Any holy days in March? June, Mar- um, March, April. Usually there's one in April, depending on where uh, the year is. And I said in our diocese, they, it's not no longer, they moved it to Sunday. What day is that? Easter. Ascension. Ascension. Ascension Thursday. They've moved to a Sunday. They're making it easier and easier on people. But still people, what? They still don't do it. So April, May, is there any in May? Any any in June? Any in July? Any in August? What's one in August? Okay. August 15th, my brother's birthday. That's how I always remember that. Any September? October? November? Just had one. All Saints Day, although this year it happened to fall on what? 
on Sunday. So November 1st, All Saints Day. And December, what? Two of them in December, what are they? Immaculate Conception on Christmas. Okay, Immaculate Conception on December 8th, and then Christmas on December 25th. Wait, Wait what's the other one? I haven't seen this one. Back of conception on December 8th and Christmas on December 25th. So we have Solemnity of Mary on January 1st. You got all, you got the uh, Holy Thursday, or not Holy Thursday, Ascension Thursday, sometime in 40 days after whenever Easter falls. Okay? Then you have uh, Assumption on August 15th. Then you have All Saints Day. On November 1st, you have Immaculate Conception on December 8th and Christmas on December 25th. Five types of prayer and a specific example from the Mass. So give me one. I already gave some of them. So intentions, prayers of the faithful. You're asking God for things. That's one. Thanksgiving, we thank God. Where in the Mass do we thank God? What prayer in the Mass do we thank God? Nobody got this one? Did you get a Thanksgiving prayer in Mass? Praise. Well, that's another type of prayer, but where, we, where's the example of Thanksgiving in the Mass? After the reading. After what? After the reading. After the first reading, we say what? Thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. There's a prayer. If you listen to Eucharistic prayers, they're full of thanking, thanking God for what he's doing for us. Okay? Then praise. What are some examples of praise? They were in the front. The, the acclamation, the alleluia, the gloria, the holy, holy, holy. After the gospel, we say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All songs of praise. Okay, so what's the other two? Meditation. Meditation. When does that happen? When you at the Mass. So you can you do pray. it before, at the end of Mass. You could do it. Usually most people do it before and after. What else? Eucharistic Well, that's not Mass. But before, before you receive Eucharist, most people have a meditation time. And after you receive Eucharist, most people have a meditation time. And then the last one? No, intercession is petition or prayers of the faithful. One more? Contrition. Which says what? I'm sorry, so which, where is that in the Mass? What? We, we just told you, the penitential, right? We say what? Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned. Here, that's prayers of contrition. At, right before we receive communion, we say what? Lord, I am not. That's a prayer of what? That's a prayer of contrition. When we say, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. What? Have mercy on us. That's a prayer of contrition. That's why the Mass is so great, because it incorporates what? All the prayers, types of prayers there are. But most of the time, we're not what? We're not praying. We're just going through the motions. So the last part is where you, is your own personal. Some, a lot of people didn't understand that. One way you could make the Mass, so that's from an internal motivation. And the other one is an external. So, so how can the Mass be more meaningful to you if somebody else did something? And then the last one is describing a specific Mass. This is what most people don't describe it in your past. They didn't describe why was that so meaningful for you. Did, I hope you all wrote that, why it was meaningful for you. And also describing the Mass. Okay? Any questions about it? Hopefully when we go to Mass again. Like this this weekend, even though it's not an obligation. At a minimum, you should at least do what? Pray. 
we can watch it on online. Watch it. Okay, give them to me. I'll, I'll finish the grading. I'll look at the bottom. No, we, we ordered pizza. I think I've got Mountain Dew. Well, Mountain Dew probably was this one from the trash can. Spanish? No, we didn't order we ordered Little Caesar. Don't put it away, Nathan. Oh, yeah. Your choice to eat. Now, I have everyone's, right? Yeah. Or at least everyone that's in here. Turn to page 87 and 88. Seven eighty eight. Got ten minutes to do this. That would have been. I swear you're always touching that stop. No, I'm trying to think. Hit the stop button.